film were showing symptoms and corrective actions right along with each testing and troubleshooting procedure. In actual practice, however, you should only fix what is required to complete all of the tests as you perform them. When you're testing and troubleshooting hydro tractors, there's one best way to do it. To save yourself a lot of time and trouble and wasted work in needless teardowns. Simply do it in the exact step-by-step -step order we'll be showing here. Assuming the tractor is drivable, the first thing you do is check the fluid level. Exactly as prescribed on the dipstick. And make sure it's Hytran in there. Will fit fluids may cause internal damage or premature failure. Keep in mind too that it has to be changed every thousand hours or 12 months, whichever comes first. To be on the safe side, you replace the hydraulic filters before you start any testing, with an IH filter, of course. When you do any testing on a hydro, be sure the hydraulic fluid temperature is at least 125 degrees, hot enough for leaks to show up. And of course, you observe all safety precautions at all times. If you find noisy or erratic hydraulics, or foaming fluid, check for aeration, which can also cause line breakage and excessive heat. Add five gallons of Hytran to the system. If this check corrects the problem, you have a suction leak between the transmission housing and the final drive housing, and you'll have to replace the seal. If an extra five gallons of Hytran does not correct the noisy or erratic hydraulics, you'll have to trace for air leaks on the suction side of the system. And again, remember, you should only fix what is required to complete all of the test. Before you test drive the tractor, check the adjustment of the foot and inch pedal. The clearance between it and the deck should be 60 thousandths plus or minus 30 thousandths. If it's not, you adjust it by turning the spool in or out of the clevis. Also check the SR lever adjustments. The allowable end play of the control handle shaft is a maximum of 15 thousandths. If this needs correcting, you add shims between the shaft bracket and the lever. Also check the mechanical neutral position of the SR lever. To adjust it, you reposition the spool extension. Now we're going to stop the film so you can go to the tractor and your service manuals and review the steps we've just covered here. When you've done that, come back and continue with the film. Now you're ready to test drive the tractor. During the test drive, you'll check the hydraulic neutral, servo response or acceleration, deceleration, and anti-coast. To check the hydraulic neutral, put the range lever in low and turn the engine up to 1,700 RPMs. Move the SR lever to zero forward. There should be no creep whatsoever. Forward creep should start when you move the lever forward about three-eighths of an inch, about the width of the lever. Likewise with reverse creep. If the point of creep is wrong in either direction, you may need to adjust the neutral position of the cam plate. Or the neutral position of the variable orifice on the pump servo cylinder. If you can find no hydraulic neutral, and the tractor keeps moving in one direction, whether you put it in forward or reverse, you have a leaky pump servo cylinder. Step two of your test drive is for proper servo response or acceleration. With the engine turning 1800 RPMs in high range, slowly move the SR lever to the blue range, where you should get a speed of 10 to 12 miles an hour. Move the lever full forward you should get a noticeable increase in acceleration to a speed of about 18 miles an hour. If you don't get both of these proper speed responses, check for a motor servo cylinder problem. The third step is your deceleration check. With the tractor moving forward, ease the SR lever back to the zero forward position and let go of it. 
The lever should stay in zero forward until the tractor comes to a smoothly decelerated stop and should then return to mechanical neutral. If, however, the tractor tends to freewheel, check for a leaky deceleration valve or a leak on the reverse drive side. Your fourth step is checking the anti-coast function. With the tractor fully accelerated, pull the SR lever back to about a half inch from zero forward and at the same time depress the foot and inch pedal. The tractor should free wheel for several seconds. Then go into a smoothly controlled deceleration as the anti-coast valve takes over. If, however, the tractor should continue to free wheel, check for a sticking anti-coast valve. That completes your test drive. To repeat, always do it in this exact order and you'll save yourself a lot of time and trouble. Okay, we're going to stop the film again so you can review the test drive at the tractor. When you've done that, come back to the film. Having completed the test drive, you're ready to check the pressures and flow. You check the charge pressure and servo pressure simultaneously. While operating the tractor, as specified in your service manual, in neutral, forward, and reverse. But if the charge pressure is low or extremely unsteady, check for suction side air leaks. Check the charge supply line O-rings for leakage. Finally, check for a charge pump malfunction. If the servo pressure is low, check the servo regulator valve. Also check the servo supply tube. When testing the drive pressure, operate at high idle and in high range with the foot and inch valve closed, keeping your foot clear away from the pedal. Move the SR lever forward about an inch, causing the tractor to creep. Apply both brakes equally to put resistance on the transmission and try to build the specified drive pressure. Repeat the procedure in reverse. In either direction, if the engine stalls before reaching the specified drive pressure, check the engine for proper performance, assuming it checks out okay, and you can't build up enough drive pressure. You first look for a leaking foot and inch valve. Remove the return line of the foot and inch valve and try again to build up drive pressure. Watch to see if the valve starts to leak before you develop the specified drive pressure. If it does, replace the seat or the poppet, or both. However, if the foot and inch valve does not leak, and you still have low drive pressure, you install isolation valves to eliminate the drive control valve and foot and inch valve from the rest of the system. This lets you determine if the leak is external in the drive control valve, or internal in the relief valves or lines. Make sure you observe the exact procedure for protecting the system as shown in your manual. Plus all safety precautions, among them the fact that the foot and inch pedal is now useless for stopping the tractor. If you can now build up sufficient drive pressure, you know the leak is external in the drive control valve. If, on the other hand, the drive pressure is still low, you know the leak is internal. Inspect the high pressure lines for loose fittings or cracks. At the same time, inspect the relief valves for any malfunction. And while you're at it, also examine both check valves for leaks. If you're able to develop sufficient drive pressure in one direction, but not the other, check for a sticking shuttle valve. Here again, we're going to stop the film so you can review the pressure checks at the tractor. Now you check the charge flow with a flow rater to help you analyze the internal components. Careful, conscientious use of the flow rater can save you many hours of needless teardown. With the flow rater hooked up as shown in your service manual, check the charge flow against the specs in your manual. In neutral. Forward. And reverse. If the charge flow meets the specs in all three positions, there is nothing wrong with the transmission that would require you to tear it down. 
On the other hand, however, if the charge flow is low in any of the positions, this indicates internal leakage. You'll have to split the tractor and correct the trouble. Up to this point, we've been dealing with a drivable tractor. But what do you do when you get one you can't drive? Well, first, of course, remember, if you must move a tractor by any means other than its own engine, always be sure you have the range transmission in neutral and also the SR lever. If the tractor is not drivable and the PTO won't work and it has no hydraulics, so you obviously can't get any pressure and flow readings, the flex plate has failed and you'll have to replace it before you can do anything else. Okay, there you have it. The proper step-by-step -step procedure for testing and troubleshooting a hydro tractor. You check the hydraulic fluid, making sure it's high track. Check for aeration and suction leaks. Check the adjustments of the foot and inch pedal and the SR lever. You test drive the tractor. During the test drive, you'll check the hydraulic neutral, servo response or acceleration, deceleration, and anti-coast. You check the charge pressure and the servo pressure. You check the drive pressure. You isolate the foot and inch and drive control valves to determine if the trouble is external or inside the center section. Finally, be sure you check the charge flow to get a critical analysis of the internal components before you do any teardown. This step is crucial, so don't skip it. Most hydro problems are of a minor nature. If you'll do it the way we've shown, step for step, you'll find it's relatively quick and easy to test and troubleshoot a hydro, to pinpoint the problem, get the hydro fixed, and the tractor back to the operator in the shortest possible time.